In this video, we're looking at the 4070 Ti Super 16 gigabytes up against the 7900 XTX from AMD. I do have the reference model and a kind of, you know, base model spec Asus tough non-OC version of the 4070 Ti Super. And yes, I'm aware that there are 7900 XTX uh, models out there that can overclock like crazy and this is just the reference model. Uh, but anyway, that's what we're looking at in this video. That's the model that I was sent for testing by AMD. Now, why are we looking at these two GPUs? Why not compare the 7900 XDX against the 4080 Super? Well, I already did. And the thing is, AMD's pricing has dropped a bit and the 4080 Super price is also stabilizing. What I'm getting at here is actually in the current market, the, there is the same price difference between a 7900 XTX and a 4080 Super, $100, as there is between a 4070 Ti Super and the 7900 XTX. If we look at the current lowest prices on PC Part Picker, if we sort for 7900 XTX, uh, first of all, ignore this RTX 2060 that pops up for some reason, uh, but you can notice that there are $900 versions of this card. There's at least one for $899.99 and one at $910. This has been creeping down because we've seen the 4080 Super uh, actually start to become available at its MSRP of $1,000, which wasn't really the case for a while after launch, where the MSRP models kind of dried up. They are coming back in stock now, and I could buy one right now, and I've been able to for the last, few, uh, you know, uh, actually about a week now, uh, if I wanted to at MSRP. The 4070 Ti Super is still sitting at its MSRP uh, MSRP of $800 on, again, at least some models. So if you compare the lowest priced models of all three cards, you end up with a $100 price gap between each of them, which means it's just as reasonable to ask the question, should you spend $100 more to get the 7900 XDX versus a 4070 Ti Super, uh, compared to should you, you know, spend $100 more from a 7900 XDX to get a 4080 Super, which again, I already looked at that in this video. Uh, I determined that when the 7900 XDX costs, uh, costs too close to a 4080 Super, it's not that much faster in non-ray trace performance, but loses badly in ray tracing workloads that the 4080 Super is strong enough to do. Uh, and, uh, you know, the 4080 Super is more energy efficient with a better upscaler. So I didn't think it was a great matchup when their prices are too close. So it'll be interesting to see how it matches up against the, uh, the slower uh, 4070 Ti Super, but again, also cutting some money off the price. And in today's matchup, we're looking at a $900 GPU versus an $800 GPU, which means the 7900 XTX costs 12.5% more than the 4070 Ti Super. It's a 12.5% price increase. Uh, so when we uh, look at benchmarks like this, and we'll look at lots of games at lots of settings, uh, start with some Unreal Engine 5 games, since that's, that engine's such a big deal, here we're seeing at 4K epic settings that the 7900 XTX is 12% faster for 12.5% more money. Uh, if uh, you kick on DLSS and FSR at the quality setting, our frame rates now jump to the way you might actually play the game at 68 and 76 respectively, which is again a 12% gap. So, uh, but now the image quality is much worse on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, you can see the pavement's a little more flickery, the car grills are a little bit less stable. FSR quality at 4K is fine, but DLSS is looking better. Uh, if we go down to 1440p epic settings, we don't need any upscaling uh, to get high frame rates, and now we're at 91 versus 79 FPS, so a 15% performance advantage in the averages, uh, and again, about let's call it 12.5% price increase, a 13% price increase, right? So 15% more performance for about 13% more money. Again, better than we saw at 4K, but it's still a roughly even price to performance scaling with the lower end feature set. At 1080p resolution, we're seeing a 15% advantage. Again, this time at 129 versus 112. The 1% lows are a little more compressed in at a 10% advantage. Uh, so again, the 7900 XTX is absolutely faster in this game, but the price scaling uh, is similar to the performance scaling, which then, we, again, when you look at feature set is different, but not every game shows the same performance differences. If I look at another Unreal Engine 5 game, this one, Immortals of Avium, 
at 4K ultra settings. Now I'm seeing a 30% performance advantage for the 7900 XDX at 52 versus 40 and 31% advantage in the 1% lows, although neither GPU is hitting the frame rates here that we'd probably want to see for a first person shooter style game. So let's go ahead and kick on DLSS and FSR at the quality setting. In which case now, again, I think there is a bit of an image quality advantage on the left-hand side of the screen. How much of that comes through YouTube compression? I don't know, but there's lots of videos investigating the image quality differences between DLSS and FSR. But now also the performance advantage drops to a 21% advantage at 82 versus 68. The 1% lows though are still winning by 30% at 69, nice, versus, uh, well, we're jumping over to uh, 4K Ultra DLSS and FSR quality plus frame generation. And now we're actually seeing something kind of interesting. So I'm gonna maybe actually stop here for a second. Let's talk a little bit about frame generation. So just a reminder that generated frames increase the motion fluidity on your screen, but they do not uh, increase the responsiveness of the game. Now with a high enough base frame rate, the game still feels responsive, uh, but it's important to note that, you know, uh, 130 frames per second achieved through frame generation doesn't feel as good as 130 frames per second achieved without using frame generation to get there from both image quality and responsiveness perspective. Speaking of image quality, DLSS, not only the upscaling, but also versus FSR, uh, you know, frame generation also have differences in image quality. Uh, there's motion interpolation artifacts on both of them and they're not exactly the same. And also, uh, while we're noticing we're getting more overall frames from FSR 3 here, uh, the 1% lows are lower and the frame time graph looks a lot spikier. Also, Immortals of Avium has uh, one of the older versions of FSR 3. Some games have a newer version. So I guess what I'm getting at here is this relative performance here hides a lot because there's a lot of differences in the frame pacing and image quality happening here. But I thought I'd just show that both technologies are available in this game. And so, um, uh, anyway, what we're getting here is that both GPUs can enable frame generation and get high refresh rate, uh, you know, motion smoothness on 4K ultra settings in the game. Let's go down to uh, 1440p ultra settings where we're now seeing the 7900 XTX winning by 26% at 97 versus 77. And the 1% lows are a 37% advantage at 81 versus 59. So this is certainly a game where spending the extra 13% price uh, certainly seems to be getting you a lot more performance, right? This is, this is showing good value. Um, and if we go down to 1080p resolution, which I'm not sure how many people are buying GPUs of this class for 1080p performance, um, you know, for 1080p screens, but you know, there's always the eSports gamers out there who have like a extremely high refresh rate 1080p display, but you might also kick on some um, single player games from time to time. A anyway, we're at a 28% advantage here now for the 7900 XDX at 134 versus 105. But let's look at one more Unreal Engine 5 game. This one seems to favor NVIDIA um, from a, uh, you know, optimization by GPU brand perspective. And when we take a look at that, uh, we're now seeing that uh, the 7900 XTX still wins, but it's only a 6% lead. And again, you're spending 13% more. This is 4K ultra settings and neither GPU is doing great at 37 versus 35 FPS. So let's go ahead and kick on DLSS and FSR at the quality setting and Unreal Engine 5 is very like per pixel uh, rendered. In other words, lowering the rendering resolution helps performance a lot. We jump all the way to 62 and 61 FPS respectively, giving a 2% lead to the XTX, 11% advantage in the 1% lows. But now there's also the image quality advantage um, uh, for DLSS on the left-hand side of the screen. So I would say, well, performance, there was about a tie, you know, the image quality advantage, when advantage 4070 Ti Super. Uh, at 1440p Ultra, uh, we can get over 60 FPS without upscaling, but, you know, not beating 60 by that much on this caliber of GPU. So uh, pretty demanding Ultra settings in this game. We're at 66 versus 62, which is a 6% lead in the averages. Although the 1% lows are more noticeable, 55 versus 45, 22% advantage for the XDX. If we go ahead and kick on DLSS and FSR at the quality setting, again, image quality advantage to DLSS, and now performance in the averages at least kind of levels out to a 2% lead for the XDX. And performance looks really good now at 95 and 93 respectively. Uh, it seems like Unreal Engine 5 is definitely kind of designed with upscaling in mind. 
Uh, and here we're seeing a 14% lead for the XTX in the 1% lows at 74 versus 65. Now at 1080p resolution, um, you know, both GPUs do well at 89 versus 84, 6% lead for the XDX, 16% in the 1% lows. Now I was suspicious that this game might be using the hardware accelerated ray tracing version of Lumen. All the explaining why um, you know Nvidia performed better here relatively than in our other Unreal Engine 5 games, but all everything I could look up online says it's not using it, the hardware version of Lumen. It's using the software version of Lumen, but the performance you know made me suspicious. But anyway, the reason that made me suspicious if you look at a game like Avatar: Frontiers of Pandora, which also uses um, uh, ray tracing at all times. Uh, we're seeing a similar performance differential between the GPUs. Here at 4K Ultra, we're seeing a 5% advantage for the 7900 XTX, but our overall frame rates are only 42 and 40 respectively, so I don't think that's probably the way most people would end up playing. So if you kick on DLSS and FSR at the quality setting, both GPUs jump to 65 frames per second, although this 4070 Ti Super takes a 10% lead in the 1% lows at 57 versus 52. So this is Nvidia showcasing its ray tracing advantages uh, where the s normally slower GPU when you're not using ray tracing now ties the XTX uh, in this ray tracing workload. And my fire alarm just kicked on. Okay, fire alarm went off. Um, it seems to not be a, an issue. The house doesn't appear to be burning down. So I, I guess we'll, we'll keep rolling. I think I remember what we were doing. Oh yeah, it's Avatar. So this game only features ray tracing. You can't totally turn it off. This is not Unreal Engine 5 anymore. This is Ubisoft's Snowdrop engine. And at 1440p Ultra, both GPUs are doing well at 75 and 72 respectively, but that does mean that XTX is only winning it by 4% in the averages. And actually the 4070 Super, TI Super, is 11% head in the 1% lows. If we go ahead and jump to 1080p resolution, uh, we actually see the 4070 Ti Super pull ahead in the averages by 8% uh, at 107 versus 99, and the 1% lows are actually now winning by 18% at 84 versus 71. So we certainly see architectural differences where the 4070 Ti Super, the lower the resolution is, uh, seems to perform better relatively than it does at the higher resolutions versus the XTX. Now, if we jump into Alan Wake 2, another big, uh, you know, graphical showcase of recent gaming, at 4K high settings, there, this game has no native TAA option. You, you're forced into a DLSS or FSR native pathway, uh, which is what we're seeing here. And um, I am using the respective technology, so I do think DLSS actually has a bit of an edge here. 10% lead in the averages for the XTX, but the 70 Ti has a 35% lead in the 1% lows. If we kick on DLSS and FSR quality, we're now actually getting more like the performance you'd probably want at 68 and 77, so 13% lead for the XDX, but the 1% lows are actually 50% win for Nvidia here at 48 versus 32. And this is a repeatable thing I've seen not only on this graphics card set, but in a lot of my AMD versus Nvidia videos in this particular game. Uh, it seems like the frame time graphs are not super stable for AMD, so the 1% lows aren't great. This is also a path tracing showcase. However, at 4K resolution, I don't think the 4070 Ti Super really has enough muscle to max out the path tracing mode. Even with performance level upscaling, which is a 1080p internal render, which DLSS can do a reasonable job of reconstructing to 4K. Uh, the performance still isn't great though at 44 FPS for the 4070 Ti Super, although it is a 76% lead in the averages. If we drop down to 1440p resolution at high settings, by the way, there is no ultra preset. High is the highest preset that doesn't include ray tracing. And when I enable ray tracing, it's on top of the high preset. Anyway, um, here we're seeing, again, native 1440p resolution. The XTX takes a 15% lead, but the NVIDIA GPU has a smoother frame time graph and better 1% lows uh, by 20% at 54 versus 45. If we kick on ray tracing high on top of the high preset and enable quality level upscaling, the 4070 Ti Super offers a respectable 58 FPS average here. It's very, very usable for 1440p path tracing with quality level upscaling, which does look quite good here. And it's an 81% lead over the XTX and the 1% lows are actually more than doubling the performance of the XTX and you get the better DLSS image quality advantage. Now, this game does feature frame generation 
generation for DLSS 3, but not for FSR 3. So I thought I'd show the results that when you're hitting about 60 FPS, kicking on DLSS 3 frame generation can do a nice job. Uh, again, caveats that f generated frames aren't as good as, you know, uh, achieved frames without frames. Uh, AMD, I thought I'd show off that they do have driver level frame generation, which, um, isn't quite as good. <laughs> I mean, it has a lot. Watch my content on AFMF. So some people are always like, uh, well, when there's DLSS 3, you should also show AFMF. Well, the driver level frame generation has a lot of disadvantages compared to an actual game integration. So I thought I'd at least show it here. And it only, the frames only show up on AMD's software overlay, which is why I have to show this. And I can't calculate my normal averages and things like that. Um, anyway, it, from both an image quality and frame pacing perspective, AFMF is not as good as like an FSR3 implementation, but it is something you could try, although the base frame rate here is too low. It's below the, um, uh, the recommended use case, uh, even from AMD's recommendations. So thought I'd just throw it out there though, uh, in the comparison and notice that um, the uh, NVIDIA GPU here though with a high enough base frame rate and then motion smoothing with DLSS 3 can get a pretty good 1440p path tracing experience here, uh, which the XTX really can't deliver. Now let's go ahead and continue on with our comparisons. If we go down to 1080p resolution at high settings native resolution, the XDX takes an 11% lead in the averages. Both GPUs are doing great at 113 versus 102 FPS. But the 1% lows, again, are better for NVIDIA, where in this game, um, they just have a smoother frame time graph. Now, remember, I'm using a DLSS pathway versus an FSR pathway, so it's possible that that's one of the differences here. But either way, um, you're getting a smoother result. Now, if we go uh, 1080p uh, ray tracing here, now again, I don't think too many people are buying these GPUs for 1080p, but if you do, with no upscaling, the path tracing mode is quite playable on the 4070 Ti Super with a 54 FPS baseline. Uh, and again, you could use frame generation on top of that without upscaling, uh, although I'm not showing that here. But the XDX is below 30 FPS, even at 1080p in the path tracing mode. Let's move on to Cyberpunk. Uh, which at 4K ultra settings, the 7900 XTX is able to hit average over 60 FPS in the benchmark at 61, whereas the 4070 Ti Super only hits 45. So that's a 36% lead for the XTX here, and this is one of our best results relatively for the AMD graphics card that we've seen so far here. Cyberpunk in general seems to be a standout title for uh, AMD's RDNA 3 architecture. Now, if we kick on the path tracing mode though, again, we see uh, NVIDIA kind of flexing its muscles, except for the fact that at 4K resolution, even with performance mode upscaling, which again is reconstructing from a 1080p internal resolution, um, this is only hitting 47 FPS average. So while it's a 62% lead, I'm not really sold on this being the way most people would want to play the game. And I feel like that frame rate's a bit low to kick on frame generation, although other people may disagree. At 1440p ultra settings, no ray tracing, we see the XTX taking a 29% advantage at 126 versus 98, and a 15% lead in the 1% in the lows at 85 versus 74. So again, when you're not using ray tracing, Cyberpunk is actually a pretty standout game for AMD's RDNA 3 architecture uh, in relative performance. But if we again kick on the path tracing mode, the thing is that at 1440p with DLSS quality, which looks respectable at 1440p, especially with uh, you know ray reconstruction kicking in and all of that, the RT overdrive mode here is hitting 59 FPS on the 4070 Ti Super, giving it a 69 nice percent advantage over the XTX. And the main difference here is um, you could absolutely use this uh, on the 4070 Ti Super for a path traced 1440p experience, um, whereas it's not so usable on the XTX. And once again, uh, you would have DLSS 3 frame generation available here, taking a 60 FPS baseline to 90 something FPS of motion fluidity, which we're seeing up here. You could kick on AFMF again for the XTX, but it's uh, again, coming from too low of a base frame rate and there's disadvantages to using AFMF over a full game integration. Although um, uh, CD Projekt has promised that FSR3 is coming to the game at some point. Now let's take a look at the RE engine 
Uh, with Resident Evil 4 Remake at 4K Prioritize Graphics preset, which is the highest non-ray traced preset, we're seeing the XTX take a 26% advantage at 118 versus 94, and a 16% lead in the 1% lows at 99 versus 85. So this game is quite performant and looks quite good. And if we kick on the uh, max preset, that does enable some ray tracing, although the ray tracing in this game is a pretty light ray tracing workload. It's kind of grainy, low quality ray traced reflections, and quite frankly, I don't like the look of them, and I turned them off. But even with them on, the XTX is actually taking a 19% lead at 95 versus 80. So it still has a lead, although its lead has shrunk compared to the lead it had when ray tracing was not enabled. If we drop down to 1440p resolution at prioritized graphics, which again does not have ray tracing, we're seeing a 12% lead at 197 versus 176. Frame rates are so high here, it's possible we're seeing some CPU limitation on that. And ah, I typed in the wrong 1% lows, don't look at them. Uh, don't, don't, don't look at it. Uh, anyway, actually the 4070 Ti Super is slightly winning in the 1% lows here. So again, I type these in manually. Occasionally there's a tiny mistake. Um, look, 158 for the 1% 1, 1 lows, 148 for the 1% lows there. So actually the 4070 Ti Super was, was winning in the 1% lows there. I ignore, ignore, ignore. Anyway, I'm so embarrassed. Whatever. Let's move on with life. Um, all right, if we go to 1440p max settings, including ray tracing, I have now typed the numbers in correctly this time. In correctly, not incorrectly. Man, I'm not clarifying things. It's too early in the morning, guys. Anyway, <laughs> max settings with ray tracing, it's basically a tie, 3% lead for the XTX. 9% uh, lead for the 4070 Ti Super and the 1% lows, but both are, have smooth frame time graphs and high refresh rates, so. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. We're in the built-in benchmark at 4K, but with basic settings, I'm turning down graphic settings for a competitive game because I think that's more realistic use case. We're getting 195 FPS on the XDX versus 157 on the TI Super, which is a 24% advantage for AMD here. 33% advantage in the 1% lows at 128 versus 96. If we go down to 1440p basic settings, we're now seeing a 15% lead for the XTX in the averages at 293 versus 254, and a 6% lead for Nvidia in the 1% lows at 167 versus 157. But honestly, guys, both frame rates are so high that if you're not getting the kill at these frame rates, you really shouldn't be blaming the hardware. It's a skill issue. So anyway, let's go ahead and move along here. So at Baldur's Gate 3, I'm only showing the 4K results because anything below this gets completely CPU limited in Baldur's Gate 3 and Act 3, which is only, you know, the place where you're more likely to see performance issues in this game. It's not a super demanding game. At 4K ultra native, no upscaling, the XTX takes a 14% lead in the averages at 92 versus 81, and the 1% lows are an 18% lead at 58 versus versus 49. Uh, again, uh, moving over to Starfield, we're now seeing a 21% lead for the XTX at 4K ultra settings, 64 FPS versus 53. And the 1% lows are a 15% advantage at 47 versus 41. So here the XTX can average over 60 FPS with no upscaling and no turning anything down, where the TI Super can't it is 21% advantage there, so that's definitely noticeable. You certainly can kick on DLSS and FSR at the quality setting, giving a bit of an image quality edge now to the uh, NVIDIA GPU, but still a performance advantage for the XTX. This now, now dropped to 15% uh, at 83 versus 72. Again, remember the price differential is about 13%, so now it's kind of even price to performance scaling, but with better image quality on the TI Super. So something to keep in mind when thinking about the overall value. Now, if we move down to 1440p Ultra, we see an 18% advantage for the XTX at 93 versus 79. The 1% lows are a 3% advantage at 60 versus 58. Uh, but again, um, the 1% the, the lows in the city environment are often more CPU limited than, uh, than GPU limited once we hit over that 60 FPS range, just because the, uh, the city environment can be quite demanding on the CPU. So that's it for my tests here. So what do I think overall conclusions? Well, when you see something like this in an AMD sponsored title uh, like this one, an 18% advantage, okay, cool. Um, but like when we look at the pricing, 13% more performance, 
uh, sorry, 13% more money for 18% more performance. And then you have the games that are, you know, uh, less uh, AMD advantaged. So like you, you could take a look at, um, you know, Unreal Engine 5. We were seeing, you know, 12 to 15% leads uh, in that game. If we looked at uh, Immortals of Avium, it was more like 20 to 30% leads depending on the resolution and exact settings. And then, you know, but then there was also, you know, Lords of the Fallen, where it was only a very, very small lead for the XTX, and at some settings, not really a lead at all. So, uh, and then, you know, when, when ray tracing is enabled, games like Avatar, which force ray tracing on, you can't turn it off, their performance is about the same. Um, uh, games like Alan Wake 2, where the frame time graph's a little spiky for AMD, you got a, at, at 1440p resolution, a very usable path tracing mode on the 4070 Ti Super, you got the better upscaler, um, more available in-game frame generation, it's not that the XTX doesn't get some big wins, like when you're not ray tracing in Cyberpunk here, seeing a 36% advantage for the XTX, right? Uh, but remember, it's also more expensive. So in other words, my final conclusion here is basically this. I think the XTX should actually drop its price further to put it in more direct competition with the 4070 Ti Super. Because let me put it this way, if these two GPUs cost the same, I would definitely take the XTX over the 4070 Ti Super. The 4070 Ti Super has a better upscaler, it's more power efficient, I wasn't making a big deal out of that, but it is drawing less power. Um, and in ray tracing workloads, it could either tie or beat the XTX, including, like we saw, some uh, at 1440p resolution, I think the ray tracing results are more compelling, where you're actually getting very usable path tracing experiences uh, in some big games like Cyberpunk. So the 4070 Ti Super has some things going for it, but its overall results, generally the XTX is noticeably faster. Uh, you know, often 15 to 30% faster, maybe call it around, uh, you know, 20% uh, ish, right, on average, depending on resolution, when you're not using ray tracing. Um, so anyway, it's, uh, it's an interesting comparison, but it's like, it, like I said, if they cost the same, I would definitely take the XTX here, especially for 4K, where I'd be less likely to use ray tracing, um, and the uh, FSR upscaling takes less of an image quality hit. But at uh, 1440p resolution, I would still take the XTX, but it's getting a little more competitive. And uh, would I spend $100 more, 13% more? Oftentimes the lead is more than 13%, but not a lot more than 13%. And are my, my numbers off here? Because a lot of times people don't like that I'm using the reference model XTX and things like that. Uh, if I go over, I'm gonna flashbang you to like tech power up, for example, to kind of double check my results. So they have the 7900 uh, XTX as at 1440p, 17% faster than the 4070 Ti Super. So 13% more money at current pricing for 17% more average performance. I mean, yeah, that's a little bit better, uh, you know, scaling, but not by much. And then you have the feature set differences, like I said. So in my opinion, uh, and again, at 4K resolution, it has a bit more of an advantage at 21%, right? Um, but anyway, the point is, I'm not the only person seeing these results, and I think with these results, again, 13% more money for um, 17 to 20% more performance, but then there's ray tracing and upscaling and power efficiency differences. I really think AMD has the better GPU here, but it needs to cost about the same. Bring it down to $850 versus $800, and now I think we have a really compelling argument for buying the XTX. But the closer it gets to the 4080 Super, or you know, the, just the more expensive it is compared to the 4070 Ti Super, uh, the less compelling I find it. That's my results. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. I know you will. <laughs> and I hope all of you have an excellent day.